The anarchists had no doubt about their main objective, to defeat fascism. But for them, the campaign was not just against the army rebels, but against capitalism itself. While the columns surged out to defeat the enemy, committees of workers in the town struggled to construct a new order out of the confusion. At that time, it seemed impossible to solve those initial difficulties, but looking back, people really showed a lot of common sense. Everything was improvised. You could call it a miracle, despite the religious meaning of the word. It was a miracle achieved by the ordinary people. As the chaos subsided, this new revolutionary society began to function. Much of the Catalan economy was now being run by the workers themselves. In Barcelona, trams and cinemas, factories, department stores and even greyhound tracks were run by their own employees. The trade unions sought to food supplies. Union lorries drove out to the villages with goods to exchange for food. Barter, not purchasing, kept Barcelona fed for the first weeks of the Civil War. In some places, money itself, seen by anarchists as inherently evil, was abolished. Shopping was done with vouchers, issued by local committees. What do these vouchers represent? Well, they had to represent hours of production, the hours spent by a carpenter building a piece of furniture, or the hours spent by a peasant harvesting, working on the fields. Everything was calculated in hours of production. The peasants liked it because it meant making them equal to the industrial workers, making all work equal. Vouchers bought bread at the bakers, but they now also bought lunch to the Barcelona Ritz. The big hotels have been turned into hospitals or into canteens serving cheap meals to militiamen and working class families, as this anarchist newsreel proclaimed. In sus grandes cocinas, se prepara la comida para cuantos van al hotel a saciar su apetito. Los amplios comedores que antes ocupaban maquilladas y frívolas damiselas, grandes financieros, capitanes de industria, aristócratas ociosos y aventureros internacionales de toda la haya, ahora están abarrotados de hombres y mujeres humildes que siguen el ritmo de la sociedad que se está creando. Barcelona trabaja y come, esa es su fuerza y su virtud. Now that the factories and workplaces were in the hands of the workers, anarchist union leaders like Josep Costa fought to start production again. We tell the workers to get back to the factory and wait for our instructions. Immediately we called all the factory owners and executives to a meeting at the town hall. We tell them, well, gentlemen, something big has happened here. We don't know what's going to happen, but the factories have to continue functioning. We ask you to be at work again tomorrow at whatever hour you're supposed to start, five o'clock or eight o'clock. Agreed? Agreed. But we have to warn you, labor relations will be very different from now on. The CNT, the anarchist trade union, had been taken by surprise when the revolution began. It was anarchist militants who rallied the workers to take over their industries. Where the old bosses remained, 
they had to take orders from these workers' committees. Nearly 2,000 enterprises were collectivized in Catalonia, the greatest experiment in workers' self-management Western Europe has ever seen. The workers now set about improving their working conditions. Free medical care and adequate pensions were introduced. <laughs> 